Skoda is getting serious about SUVs. Proof of that comes in the form of this Qashqai-sized Karok model, a strong contender if you're looking for a spacious five-seat C-segment SUV in this class. It gets all the latest Volkswagen Group technology, including a high-tech MQB chassis and cutting-edge safety and infotainment features. In theory, then, there's everything you might want from a modern family-sized crossover of this kind. On the move, there's nothing sporty about the Karok, but its ride and handling combination is truly impressive. The only rivals that can equal this car's supple suspension feel can't match the way it attacks the bends with confidence and even a few occasional flashes of enthusiasm. On the highway, refinement's impressive, and in town, it's manoeuvrable and easy to park. And when you're pushing on, the drive dynamics are very difficult to tell apart from those of an Octavia family hatch. Buyers are offered a choice of six-speed manual transmission or a seven-speed DSG auto. Engine-wise, the range is propped up by a 115 PS 1-litre TSI petrol power plant, but most will want the perkier 150 PS 1.5-litre TSI petrol unit. Diesel folk get to choose between a 115 PS 1.6-litre TDI unit or the 2-litre TDI variant we're trying here, which most will want in this 150 PS guise. You'll need the 2-litre TDI engine if you want to specify four-wheel drive and a diesel-powered Karok. And if you go for all-wheel traction, you'll also get more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension. Plus, an extra off-road mode, which focuses all the car's electronic systems for off-piste use. Now, the 4x4 setup is the usual on-demand system that keeps the car front-driven until a lack of traction brings the rear wheels into play. That maximizes running cost efficiency, allowing the 2-litre TDI 150 PS 4x4 variant we're trying here to return 56.5 mpg on the combined cycle and 131 grams per kilometer of CO2. If at first glance you mistook this Karok model for its larger Skoda Kodiak stablemate, then you're in good company. At first, we found ourselves doing that too. Get to know the styling of this more mainstream SUV a little better though, and the differences between the two designs uh, begin to become more readily apparent. Uh, for a start, it's a substantial 315 millimeters shorter than a Kodiak, and it's significantly narrower and lower too, although you'll find it much bigger in all those dimensions than the brand's previous Yeti model if you're graduating up from one of those. Behind the wheel, the design team have delivered another very smartly turned out Skoda cabin. The interior being beautifully put together, smartly designed and very easy on the eye. Distinctive brand touches start with the grey ringed instrument dials that you view through this smart three-spoke wheel. And they continue with the way that the cabin abounds with plenty of the company's famed simply clever design features. Uh, these are all there to make life just a little bit easier. Take this jumbo box between the seats, which incorporates this neat reversible tray which flips over to reveal cup holders, cubbies and ticket storage slots. And what other family car provides you with an umbrella beneath the front passenger seat. Infotainment's up to scratch too, uh, courtesy of this classy glass-fronted monitor, supplied in 8-inch form on most models, but also available in this larger, more advanced 9.2-inch Columbus guys. Whatever your choice, there is standard smart link smartphone mirroring and the option of Skoda's clever infotainment online and Care Connect media connectivity packages. Enough on what it's like at the front of this Karok, let's check out the rear. That's accessed through these wide opening doors. Now, if you're trading up from the company's previous Yeti compact SUV, this is where you'll notice the biggest practical differences over what went before. As you might expect, there is a lot more legroom than there was in that previous model, although taller folk might still find their knees brushing against the front seat backs. The real cleverness here, though, lies in something Skoda's particularly proud of, its Varioflex seating system. Now, the Varioflex package replaces the usual rear bench with three separate seats that can uh, individually slide and recline or, or be removed altogether. Now, if you know you need space for two, the centre seat can be removed, allowing the two outer chairs to be then pushed up to 80 mils further in towards the centre of the cabin, creating limousine-like levels of shoulder room. 
So, time to check out the cargo area. Now, the total space you'll actually get will depend on whether the variant in question has been equipped with that Variaflex seating package that we we're just talking about. And if it hasn't, you'll get a 521 litre boot. But if, as we would recommend, you do make sure that that feature is included, you'll get a cargo bay like this one uh, that you can vary in size between 479 and 588 litres, depending on the position of those sliding rear seats. If you find yourself approaching this car a little cynically, then we would understand. At first glance, after all, it might be easy to dismiss it as just other quite forgettable European mid-sized fashion oriented SUV. A necessary addition to the Czech brand's model range perhaps, but not the kind of product that could be in any way uniquely Skoda. Surprisingly though, the Karok turns out to be more than that. In the endearingly comfortable way that it drives and handles, it's a very recognizable ambassador for the brand. It's a family car that doesn't shout family, and a crossover that you could be genuinely pleased to own.